Once again, Mud Fossil University today, unbelievable. Ancient video footage of a construction site shortly after the Great Flood. Now, there is audio here, but it is in a language you won't understand, so I will insert the audio. And I, I'll just t talk about it because I can't really give you the exact interpretation, but it's basically what happened. The construction site guy goes down, he meets with the operator that's doing the business down here and he's he's upset he says look at what you do what do you do who did they who, who left all these tracks in here who made this mess i told you not to leave this stuff we don't want anything showing up from when we were here the guy said i didn't do this he says i i, I left this and so he gave him a whole big long excuse i won't go into it but he put he said he put in somebody else in charge didn't take care of it it's too hard not nothing they can do so anyway the guy gets all mad he says all right so you've been cutting these blocks he says i got another problem let's go down and see where you've been stacking them he said, but first of all, you got to do something about this. We can't leave this fact that we were here right after the Great Flood. And the guy said, nothing I can do. It's, it's in there now. The t these are tendons. These are limestone. They're what's called porphyritic limestone, which is calcium CaCO3, sir. And it, once it hardens up in exposure to the air after a certain period of time, it becomes mineralized solid. And that's what it is, a porphyritic limestone or porphyritic basalt, whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry, Commander, I can't do anything about it. He said, well, let's go down to what you've been messing up. I got another issue with you. I'm going to send you back to the borough. He said, oh, I'd love to go back to New Borough. He said, I oh, forget about it. I'm going to send you back to New Borough. Get over here. I'm going to look at this. Now, you've been cutting things out of here. That's fine. i got no problem with that. But what I have a real problem with is how you are stacking them. So let's go look at how you stack them. So anyway, they end up down here, and then the audio starts again. And, um, and the commander is screaming at him again. He said, look at this. This is not going to last. He said, didn't you see what you're doing here? You're using this crap? He said, look, the whole wall is like this. It's going to fall down. He said, oh, no, 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 we do this all the time. He says, it's all right. He says, no, no, no. He says, this is the part of the tendon you use. Now you're into bone, you're into the fleshy stuff here. You got blood running out of here. What's the matter with you people? So they argued for a while. He said, no, 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 it'll last thousands of times. We'll be long gone. He said, well, they, they went on from there to another spot the guy's all upset about. So he come over to this spot, and he says, look over here, look what you did. You left these strap attachments here. And he said, look, so anyway, the guy protests to him. He says, look, you brought me down here to stack up all these blocks. I'm doing the best I can. You never even told me what this is all about. What, is, what are these things? Sometimes they're gooey sometimes. Sometimes they're, they're hard. Sometimes they got these bumps sticking up. they got round balls. they got all kinds of crazy stuff. What is this? He said, all right, sit down. I'm going to tell you the whole story. So the guy sits down. I think he sat right about over there somewhere. I think he leaned right up against that. That's a tendon emphasis strap attachment. And he starts telling him, he says, these are strap attachments. He says, this is what's tendons. The guy says, tendons from what? He says, we were giants. There was giants all over the earth. We flooded the earth. We killed them all. He says, we went up into the sky and we waited around for them to all drown and they got stuck in the mud, a lot of them, the huge, huge ones, they got stuck in the mud, they drowned. Their feet were stuck in the mud. Everything else eroded away because it's the fleshy stuff. But this tendonous stuff doesn't erode. This is what we're using for the construction. We're using the tendons. So the guy said, well, what are these things? He said, well, these are the straps. They run over these balls. He said, all right, I'll show you some pictures. I got some pictures. Commander pulls out his cell phone. He says, look, what you're looking at is these tendon mats. He says, did we break these little stems off? He says, but I want you to smooth them out. You leave these big lumps. He says, oh, I didn't know you wanted me to smooth them off. He says, yeah, smooth them off next time. You know, you leave these big lumps, they look terrible. Now, so he says, well, these are the balls that you see around. Because the guy was asking about the balls. He says, these are the balls. They end up attaching from these straps down to fleshy stuff. The fleshy stuff goes bad or the bones erode and go away. But the tendon mats remain. The balls fall out. They're laying all over the place. And these straps erode because they're normally very weak. And, you know, you just they break off here. And you just left them sticking out there. That's what they call an abrupt transition, by the way. And there's one on this end, and there's like this, there's several on each end, actually, because it transitions from the strappy, tough, tough, tough to a fibrous, flexible thing, and then back to strappy, tough, tough, into the ball. 
I could show you all the stuff about them. So the guy said, well, I'd love to see all that stuff. He said, well, I can show you a video later, but let's go on to a little more about this because I suppose you should know the whole story. So then they go on to this, and the commander says, I know you asked about all these hex fibers you saw. I had you over at Giant's Causeway working on that. Well, that's a giant, and that's from the giant's tendons. All right, you see them everywhere. They're from the feet, and they're from the tendons, where they have these very strong hexagon fibers. Now, there's other places that have the square fibers, too, so they don't always come to hex. Other ones are square. Those are found in different tendinous areas. I will show you what they looked like when they were alive. I know you're going to ask, so I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you. All right, I showed you the uh, hex fibers, uh, you know, and then he says, well, you said there was other kinds. I said, yes, there is. There's these kind right here. These are the square type. They actually form blocks, and it's just a difference in the actual chemistry that's there. Very subtle difference, but it changes the chemistry, the uh, angularity when they mineralize and harden because the crystals actually take on this rigid form and they, they form little planks. Now inside of them is all these tiny, 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 tiny fibers. You see that? That's what's in these. Now, what's this? Why is that little wrinkly stuff? That is what's called the stress factor in these. When they are stretched tight, these are tendons, when they're stretched tight, 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 and then you cut them, and they, they, bing, they come back like this. If you look at the top of Devil's Tower, which is a, uh, a foot, a tendon from a foot, you will see the square ones running up to the, to the, to the ones, well, they're not square, they're the hex fibers in that style, but they're in these blocky little forms, and you'll see this little, orange looking clay between them. What that is, is that's a synovial sheath. It's kaolin type clays. And they are slippery as can be. And they're flood bloody. That's the, that's the fine china. They, they, they call it slip clay, I think, a lot of them. It's a slippy, slip, slip, slip as you can be. And that is what lets these things move back and forth inside them. Because all of these things have to move amongst themselves. So, you'll see that. You'll see this at the top because that is it was under stress. You, the only reason your feet and so forth bounce up and down the way they do is because you have stress in your tendons and, and they pull against your muscles and that type of stuff. Now, then you have this. It just shows what the, the tiny little fibers look like and they're fed by little blood vessels here and there. And then this one here uh, is the this stuff, skin like here. And these are the tendon. Well, the, well they call them... Um, Oh boy, hold on a second. It's coming. <laughs> Intersection balls. These little balls are in the skin. And they see little th things tagging them. What happens is your skin can pull this way and this way and that way. It's going to come back. Well, how does it come back? Why does it come back? It comes back because these balls are anchored everywhere and they have these little strings attached to them. And when it comes out, it says, all right, come back. And it, they come back. Now, what about this? What do we got here? This and that, I believe, is what we call uh, a cellulite. All right, now I believe what you have here is the fatty, um, you know, uh, food sources that are in your body that are stored away. And then you have blood all over these things. So that if you need them, bam, they hit and they suck all this energy out real quick. You see it? That's how that works. Now, let me show you, my friend, because you're going to be mining this. Don't forget, now we're back in the old mining days doing this, and I'm training this guy how to find out what he should mine. All right, and it's called, let's go see what it looks like on the earth, some of these things. So he says, all right, there you go. There's your, this one I was just showing you that we call cellulite, I believe, that this is the fatty substance that's being sucked in by the bloody substance to infuse into the bodies to give you energy when you need it. All right, I talked about the kaolin clays. I talked about the abrupt transition. I talked about the blood flowing through here. Let's take them one at a time. The blood flowing through here is right there. That was an area where there was blood coming out of here to service tissues. Now, 
what about that abrupt transition? Well, there it is right there. That's the wrinkle zone. Where this is all under tension, tight, 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 and then and it's all the whole up the leg, and when it snaps at the abrupt transition, and this is fully understood, it snaps flat as a pancake, and when it does, it goes ding, and the surface of of, of a certain distance relaxes and does this. Sometimes it actually makes a fabulous wave. I'll show you one of those. Now, below that, what do you have? You have stressed pulled because the whole thing was pulled all like as a rubber band and when you cut it the top snapped the rest sort of settled down and it's still under stress because the whole thing was under stress so this becomes ringstone bing 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 not everyone will be ringstone it depends on where it was and how it you know what what the conditions were as it stabilized but you know there's places where there's a lot of ringstone south africa has a lot of ringstone and and um there's other things in south africa that are all, that's pretty much biological all those things that are down there those stones that are down there in south africa it's biological stuff that i believe was actually deposited in the manner that it's being found but that's not something i really can comment too deeply on but i do know about the the moss and lichen in blood and there it is all right now the kale and clays is the slippery stuff that's right over the top of these you see how it's white under here white and there's a little bit of green like and yellowish looking stuff that is the clay that's in the synovial sheaths that coats these things like a really slippery so kale and clay is as slippery as you can get it's a, it, and they call it slip slip clay uh and it's um they make fine china out of it. They bone china and all that stuff. It's very, 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 very fine. There is no particulates in kaolin and clay whatsoever. It is skin cells. That's a kaolin and clay. Skin cells. Now, so, there's your hex fibers, which are the tendons. There's your abrupt transition, which broke, went bang. There is your blood, which is servicing the tissues. The kale and clay's coating, and the underneath limestone CaCO3, mostly white, and the blood servicing the moss and lichen. All right, so anyway, this is Devil's Tower again. You can see it in its magnificent glory here, and that is from a living creature, and that was his or her foot. All right, you can see these tendon balls. The tendon balls have several different types of attachments. They have the ligaments, bone to bone. They have bone to muscle. You know, have your um, tendinous material to your muscle. You have them that run across the torso and so forth. And inside the balls, they're all pretty much constructed the same way, but there is a different construction within. Some of them have different fabrics within, and some of them have different minerals with it. So let me show you a few shots of that because you're going to be coming up against them. All right, basically in inside of all those tendon balls, you have an attachment here, which is called the abrupt transition, and there's a couple of them, and then it goes into a favorite uh, um, fibrous cord. It goes down to the tendon mat or to the tendon that uh, reaches over to the muscle or to the tendon this little strappy piece that goes over it's, it would be called ligament in this case but it would come from here over to the other bone to pull it tight and i have one here that i will show you my friend if you can wait a second up oh, on it all right we have to move this over here to get it in the light now this is what you would see in a ligament you see that ball right there? That's a tuberosity. That ball that I just showed you would fit in there. And then there would be all a bunch of other tiny little balls that fit in there to secure that and hold that bone up against the other one. And it'd be the same thing on the other side. Just right up tight the other and they still move around. Everything's fine. Then there are other tendon balls like I just showed you that are on the other surfaces and in, in, in plant muscles and so forth to other things all right so let's take it another step further 
Now, I'm not going to go any too much further with this, but that's a tendon ball right there, too. And that's one of those straps. I showed you one the, the, the one in the living tissue. That's actually one like here. And I believe Chaco Canyon is made on, on the foundations of these. And there are dozens of them. See, that's another one here. One over here, one over here. They're all over the place. When they come down, they come down in clusters. There was another one right here, if you can see. That broke, it probably was coming down to this one. The straps are, are not strong, and that one there is going to go too, because they're, they're fibrous. The balls are tough as hell. And what, around them is a weak, fleshy, t well, weak compared to the balls. The balls are tough. I, there's thousands of them around the earth. I mean, billions of them everywhere. Now, you see that? I said there's different types. This is the one that they hollow out in the center, and they have sand in them. That's a giant tendon ball. And they're here too. They're all over the place. This was a mine. They mined it all down until they gave up. That's why this is all broken up and falling apart. See that? I said it was on the skin and all loaded in the skin. These are the kind that were on the skin. This, this is skin underneath here. And the skin was on top. These are the balls that are left over after those little straps eroded away and the skin surface eroded away. You, in every creature that has this type of skin is, is a plasticky clay which is what we have and it turns into mud literally red mud and clay and if it eroded and you collected it now underneath is a, is, a, is a basement layer but in between is what they used to call the areolar tissue now they call I think they yeah, it's called it intersitium I don't know but what it is is, a, is a, a retractable layer that can pull you back and forth and it gives you that plasticky capability for your flesh to move here and there and all the rest. Now back here I think that might be something of, of major interest to me. But anyway, this I, every time I look at something I see something. Anyway, that's these are these little tiny stone balls. Now they are different than the stone balls in their interior. Let's go look at some changes. Okay, this is one style. It has all these pocket cavities and so forth. And, um, and there's a lot of structure to that. And these are the kind of out in Chaco Canyon, I believe, and they made their buildings into out of this sort of stuff. And this is that same type of stuff. Uh, and I believe these came from Lee Simpson, a friend, uh, sent both of these last two pictures to me, I believe. All right, they come and they have like an onion layers to them, a lot of them. A lot of them split right in the middle. Depends on how they get weathered and what kind of minerals they were in when they became solid and, and mineralized. Because any any type of material will adhere to other types of minerals that that are solvents to trans. It's called solvomorphism. The solvents come and they morph. The materials into other materials because they bond with them with molecules and sometimes they're in the, in the presence of acids and salts and they can come up with some spectacular results because that is spectacular for these tendon balls I've never seen another one other than that and I don't know where that is but somebody sent it to me now some of them are like this with the hole completely perfectly round hole in the center I believe the the strap is going out through that way but I think this might be chert or, or um, flint around the outside it needs to be looked into and this is one that's similar and it's cracked off here and now you see there's two different the, star, the dark and the light that's the blood coming in and blood coming back and it's this is actually leaking blood out of here that's leaking the red blood this is the vein blood the black side this is the red blood and they crack here and they just do it there's a seam in there and when they're in your body they're tough that seam has spikes coming out of it. but when you die and it sort of erodes around it makes a perfectly round ball and then the, the outer edge appears to be where the moisture gets in and they snap and crack and fall off. You see this kids playing on these balls? They're all over the beach and, they, and they've been showing up all over the shores now because storms and so forth. Now, you see what's going on in here? I'm going to show you something the Chinese did. And what they did was they would take these and slice across of them and make these absolutely gorgeous plates. Of course, these have been weathered in a condition where they won't be capable of being cut like that. They have to become 
stable in certain conditions to be used in certain ways. Otherwise, they get fractured and fall apart and all that. Thing. You see that? I believe that's what they use. That, I showed you that last tendon ball with all those different colors and the different layers of perfectly, perfectly round, solid sections, but fused with these these patterns and then they somehow cut it where it didn't fall apart maybe they had to find special ones that were stabilized in such a manner as they were really solid and maybe that happened in salts or acids or who knows what and then they somehow sliced them flat plates and then etched them to do this absolutely spectacular looking and I know that they've always wondered about that and that's the answer now here again there's another stone ball that's cracking in the middle. Now that is that's skin. This is kale and clay and that is skin. That is your skin. Now that strap went up in there and came out. There's other straps here, straps here, there's stone ball here, stone ball here. All over they make your whole skin is covered with these. These are like that big flat plane I said was would have had uh, uh, skin but it eroded away. That's where these came. These are big ones. Those were little tiny ones. And that's, and they crack because they, the bigger they are, the crackier they get. And that's where the thing went up. See the different little squishy stuff? It would have went right up there and held, and held that skin right here. Now, the skin, all this is clay. This is absolutely fine, movable, flexible, beautiful, luxurious clay when it is infused with, with moisture. You look it up, kale and clay. You should get some for your skin. You put it on your skin. It's absolutely beautiful. Anyway, because it, it, it's skin. That's all it is, is skin. Now, and it, it comes in the same colors. All right, I'll show it to you. Hold on. It's just colors of skin. It's the colors of skin. I'm telling you, I know this for a fact. That kaolin is skin clay, skin cells. You see that? That's what's kaolin. That's kaolin. Let me show you something. There it is, the skin. That's your hair. And that's like facial skin. Guy didn't shave or something. I don't know, maybe it's hair on your head or whatever. But it's the, it's the thinnest skin. It has your kaolin. And then you get into your, your sandy skin, which has silicon and, and the other rough stuff that your, your face and, and your really thin skins don't have. Your grip skin and your finger skin and all that, so your elbow skin and all the places where you rub they have the, the stuff that has to make contact with everything else so they're tough and they have a lot of other minerals but not kale all right that's kale and clay with red blood cells in it you, they eat this stuff people buy it it's, it's for sale you eat it it's minerals and women crave it when they are pregnant. I'm going to tell you something hilarious. I'm talking with Jody about this, and I said, yeah, women love this stuff. They eat it when they're pregnant. She said, I never, I never wanted any clay. I said, well, I said, well, you know, I, you probably had a good diet. She said, I never wanted it. Then I, we started looking up kale and clay, and it, she was taking something for indigestion, and the main ingredient it was kaolinite, which is this. It's this. And she says, that's amazing. She said, I hate that stuff. It was um, kaopectate, I think, K-O, kaolin, kaopectate. And she says, I was drinking it at least a bottle a week when I was pregnant, and I hate that stuff. And so she was craving it, didn't even know it. 